All right, switching gears now, join me this time to offer expert insight and analysis is the president of the, of the Israel group, Barry Nussbaum. Barry, good to see you. Thanks for having me, Rick. All right, Barry, this may be something that, that uh, you may not be familiar with in terms of the, the details I want to ask you because I know you have good contacts. It took President Obama two days to congratulate Benjamin Netanyahu after Benjamin Netanyahu won re-election. But it took President Obama two hours to call Netanyahu and inform him of a nuclear deal being agreed upon with Iran. Reports are that Netanyahu lectured President Obama in that phone call. What, if anything, do you know and can you tell us about that call? I can tell you a few things that have been leaked out of Israel. Uh, the Prime Minister of Israel is furious, feels betrayed, and feels that Iran has won everything they wanted from the United States and the P plus five in the negotiations. I spoke to a captain in the IDF this morning. His father's a the, general. The Israeli Defense Force. Yes, Israeli Defense Force. He said to me, Barry, we're screwed. Iran is getting nuclear weapons. They're in panic right now in Israel. They are in panic. When I hear that, Barry, first thing that comes to my mind is we can expect some sort of military action by Israel, perhaps in concert with Saudi Arabia and others at some point in time. Care to comment? No one knows what's going to happen. As we talked about last week, the wild card is the U.S. Congress. Uh, the Congress is highly bipartisan opposed to the deal. They're insisting on congressional oversight. Uh, there's a bill that's going to be pending in the Senate that's going to be taken up next week, the Corker Menendez uh, initiative that is going to insist that Congress gets to debate taking the sanctions off. The position in Congress is this is a armament uh, armament um, agreement and therefore Congress gets oversight, the president cannot act unilaterally. What, if anything, uh, what, what sort of leverage, I should say, if any, does Israel have in, the, in, uh, in undoing this deal? Would it be as you described in Congress? Yeah, I think, there, I think Israel's only option besides going it alone uh, is the hope that the American Congress that uh, has shown so much support for Israel and our other Middle East allies will stand firm and insist on their congressional oversight, responsibility, and authorization to approve any treaty. Meanwhile, after the foreign minister of Iran came out and said that President Obama lied, the president of Iran has now come out and said, you know what, uh, this is a good deal. We vow to, to stick to it as long as other partners stick to their promises, and we're going to use this, this program for peaceful purposes. However, as you say, people in, Iran, in Israel are in panic what are they in panic over? What are the details that we do know about this agreement that has created that panic? It's, it's, it's a number of things. Let's start with this. There weren't supposed to be centrifuges. Centrifuges are used to enrich uranium. Enriched uranium is good for one thing only, building nuclear weapons. Yes, there's a, there's a decrease, but they're still going to get 6,000 of them running 24 hours a day. Number two, they were supposed to give up the fuel that they've spent the last 10 years and billions of dollars enriching. They're not giving up any of that. That. Number three, in the White House briefing yesterday, the president talked about closing some sites. Iran says they're not closing any sites. And here's the kicker. All of this is dependent on the inspection unit of the UN to enforce this deal. That's the IAEA. Every week during these negotiations, Rick, the IAEA has said Iran is in non-compliance with almost all the existing inspection requirements. In other words, all the deals that are in place now, they're in breach of. So how can we expect, the United States expect, Iran to comply where they've been in non-compliance for probably a decade, building secret plants, secret enrichment facilities, secreting their fuel sources, and so on. I don't understand where the belief that this is going to work is coming from. It sounds awfully naive, to say the least. Now, Netanyahu has come out and said that any final deal must include Iran's, un, uh, quote, Iran's unambiguous recognition of Israel's right to exist. Do you believe Iran will ever do that? Well, what's really curious on that exact point, the head of the Iranian army three days ago said, right. the absolute destruction of Israel is non-negotiable and will stand. That's our responsibility. So we're making a deal with a country that says one bomb will destroy Israel. What kind of one bomb can destroy Israel? There's only one kind of bomb that does that. That's a nuclear weapon. So 
This week, during the negotiations, while Car Kerry is with the foreign minister of Iran in Switzerland, they're proclaiming they're going to destroy Israel as soon as possible. All right, listen, Barry Nussbaum, it's a troubling story. President Obama's legacy is on the line here, and that's what's important to him, unfortunately, while lives and security are important to everyone else. Barry Nussbaum, founding member, president of the Israel Group, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me.